Southampton arrive at Cardiff City Stadium on Saturday when the clubs clash for the 57th time over the last 110 years. They have faced each other at various levels, including Southern League One, Football League Division Two, the Championship and Premier League, plus FA Cup and League Cup. City spent two seasons in the top tier, of course, alongside the likes of Manchester City, Liverpool and Arsenal, and they fought out four Premier fixtures against the Saints. Cardiff won three of those, 1-0 away in 2014, 1-0 at home in 2018, and 2-1 away during 2019. Overall, the record between the rivals is Cardiff City 21 wins, Southampton 20 victories, and there were 15 matches drawn. I know the Southampton area fairly well, having worked in Hampshire at the age of 17 when I was appointed sports editor of a weekly newspaper called the Southern Sentinel, which was based in Winchester. Part of my duties involved reporting on the Saints, where long-serving Ted Bates was manager. He was the son of former Yorkshire and Glamorgan cricketer Eddie, and Ted dedicated 66 years to the Southampton club as player, coach, manager, director and president. A statue of Ted was erected outside Southampton's current St Mary's Stadium to commemorate his service to the, to the Saints. Hollywell-born Welshman Ron Davies, plus Mick Shannon and Terry Payne, were all in the Southampton squad during the late 1960s and early 1970s. My stay at the Southern Sentinel lasted almost a year before I returned to the Kent Messenger, the newspaper where I started my career. The very first match between the Bluebirds and the Saints was played at Ninian Park during 1913-14, the season after Cardiff had earned promotion to Southern League Division 1. They had won the second division title ahead of South End United, who were runners-up, and both were promoted. Swansea Town finished third, with fellow Welsh clubs Llanethley, Pontypridd, Midrontha, Aberdare, Newport County, Mardi, Traharis and Tom Pentra further down the table. Cardiff City Reserves played in the Western League in 1913-14 and they were crowned champions ahead of runners-up Bath City. This was also the season in which future FA Cup winning captain Fred Keener made his Cardiff City debut in a one-all home draw against Exeter City. City paid Spurs £1,000 for right-back Charlie Britton during this season, while Geordie Billy Hardy, who played in both of Cardiff City's FA Cup finals during the 20s, was ever-present through the season. George West was top scorer with 10 goals in 25 appearances. He was from Wardley, Gateshead, around four miles from Newcastle. During those early days at Ninian Park, the playing surface was occasionally showed signs of its former use as a rubbish tip, with debris, including glass, often rising to the surface. The club paid players six old pence extra per hour to arrive early and help clear unwanted objects off the pitch. Even that did not always avoid disaster. Inverness-born Peter McWilliam, nicknamed Pat among teammates and Inverness Thistle fans, suffered a gash to his leg while playing for Scotland in a two-all draw at Ninian Park, and that injury ended his playing career. McWilliam also played for Newcastle United, while he later became manager of Spurs. Wales international Billy Meredith from Black Rock near Wrexham also suffered a cut knee in that match when he fell on rubbish coming to the surface. Cardiff City's own Jack Evans, who was born in Bala, Gwyneth, was scarred for life when a piece of glass cut his knee at Ninian. Wales international Evans, who operated outside left, made well over 350 first team appearances for Cardiff. He was a football and, and apprentice printer in Bala before moving to South Wales to gain new experience in printing. Evans, initially signed for Cum Park, was spotted by Cardiff City 
and was the first player officially bought by the club, who paid him a six shillings signing on fee. City Secretary Bartley Wilson said the fee was all we had and it included his fare from Triorchy. Cardiff were in their fourth season as a professional club, having started in Southern League Division 2 in 1910-11. Southampton were an older club, having been formed as Southampton St Mary's by a local church curate in 1885. The name of Southampton's present stadium, St Mary's, reflects their 19th century start. When the Saints, who gained their nickname because of the club's beginnings as a church football team, came to play Cardiff City in Wales for the first time, Ninian Park was being given a facelift. The wooden grandstand, which had been built during November, December 1910, was extended the full length of the pitch on, on the Sloper Road side of the ground. An earth enclosure in front of the grandstand was terraced, while there was an improvement to benefit players. Until this time, Ninian Park had only had one dressing room, which had to cater for both teams. That was in a wooden building at the Sloper End stroke Canton End corner of the ground. From this point, each team would have their own... From this point on, each team would have their own changing room, although the ground was still fairly primitive, with uncovered earth banking and no terracing on three sides. Southampton travelled by rail for that first fixture against City at Ninian Park and arrived at Cardiff Station at midday for the 3pm kickoff. Taxis took their players to a local hotel for their pre-match meal and then on to Ninian Park. None of Cardiff's players owned a car in those days and they would have travelled from their homes by tram to the end of Wellington Road or Penarth Road before continuing their journey on foot. Southampton won 2-1 in that first clash. Len Andrews fired the visitors ahead after 40 minutes with Billy Devlin equalising. Devlin from Hebburn in the north of England scored 24 goals in 52 appearances for Cardiff. His first club had been Stockport County where Fred Stewart had been manager. Devlin joined Cardiff to link up with Stewart again. The forward later moved on to Newport County and then Exeter City. Arthur Dominey, who later became Southampton manager, netted the winner in front of 15,000 spectators. That was the first Bluebirds blow against the Saints, but Cardiff took the honours at Premier League level with those three wins against Cardiff in four matches. Let's have a look at those uh, wins. In 2014... The Bluebirds won 1-0 at Southampton. Goalkeeper David Marshall was outstanding, while City defended with commendable discipline. Spanish defender Juan Torres Ruiz, commonly known as, as Cala, scored the winning goal for Cardiff. The South Coast side half cleared a corner, and Cala chested the ball down, sidestepping Stephen Davis before firing a powerful shot past goalkeeper Paolo Gazaniga. Manager Oli Gunnar Solskjaer was able to enjoy his first away win in charge of Cardiff City, while Maurizio Pochettino was in charge of Southampton. We were dominating the game, but in the final third, we lacked the attacking edge we needed, said Pock. And their keeper, Marshall, made some outstanding saves. In 2018, it was Scottish international Callum Pat Patterson who scored City's 74th minute winner, in a 1-0 success, ruining the day for new Southampton manager Ralph Hassentutl. Cardiff's fourth win in five home matches lifted them to 14th place in the table, four points clear of the bottom three. Austrian Hassentutl had replaced Welshman Mark Hughes in charge of the Saints, but this was a 12th league game without victory, which le left Southampton second from bottom, three points adrift of safety. City wingers Josh Murphy and Nathaniel Mendes-Lang often ran Southampton's men ragged with their pace and power. In 2019, Cardiff City travelled to uh, Southampton and won 
Kenneth Zahor scored the Bluebirds' winner at St Mary's, netting three minutes into second half injury time. Sol Bamba had given Cardiff the lead after 69 minutes, with Jack Stevens equalising a minute into injury time. Southampton's celebrations were soon cut short by Copenhagen-born Zahor's strike to take all three points for Cardiff City. Goalkeeper Neil Etheridge, now playing for Birmingham City and is captain of the Philippines national team, was named Cardiff's man of the match. This was a good day for the Bluebirds in Hampshire, but at the end of the season, Cardiff City, Fulham and Huddersfield were relegated while the Saints stayed up. The match at St Mary's had been preceded by a minute's silence in memory of Emiliano Sala, whose body was formal, formally identified on the previous Thursday after being recovered from the wreckage of the plane that crashed over the English Channel. For the third game in succession, Cardiff City players and staff wore yellow daffodils in honour of the Argentine striker, while the visitors warmed up in T-shirts bearing Salah's image. Cardiff manager Neil Warnock said, We wanted to do it for Emiliano, and I'm really proud the lads have done him justice. The victory at Southampton meant Cardiff City had won consecutive top flight games for the first time since April 1962, beating Bournemouth 2 0 at home and then the Saints away. Bobby Decordova, Bobby Decordova Reed had scored both goals against Bournemouth at Cardiff City Stadium.